Hello everyone, this is Experiment Design in Computer Sciences, week 4, part 3, comments, etc. Let's get going. So, in the last class, we described the new hypothesis testing method to perform statistical inference on a population parameter from a simple sample. In this class, we generalize this procedure a little bit more when we want to compare two samples in a population uh, regarding a population parameter. So, for this class, we showed that doing with two samples, we just modify the two hypothesis sampling tests very, very easily. Okay, uh, we do the, the sample test on the difference between the estimators. We also talked about the when there is a high correlation between observations, it's important to perform the pairing of the observations. Now, quick reminder of the rest of the course. So this was class four, inference testing. Next week, it will be golden week, so we're not going to have class. The class after that, we're going to have a short R tutorial and a review and discussion of project one. So project one, the deadline is next week. I will spend some time to review it and I will try to do some comments there. And the class six will be inference testing. We are going to be talking about uh, multiple hypothesis testing, I believe. And after that, we're going to do case studies. We're going to see several examples to try to improve your knowledge of uh, inference testing, especially in the context of CS papers. Uh, on class eight, we're going to talk about sample sizes, something that we have until now we have assumed, oh, we're going to test enough. So we're going to talk a little bit more concretely about that. Um, and on class nine, we're going to do a final review okay, of the subjects. Finally, class 10 will be the presentation of project two. Just to remember, the deadline of project two is actually after the final exam, but we have a presentation here just to give, get, get everyone to talk about the results and to discuss the project two. Finally, we're gonna have the final exam after that. Now, about the report one, that the deadline next week, I hope that you are already doing your experiments and doing your analysis. Uh, let's talk about the format of report one. There is no fixed format, but there are some guidelines that you have to follow. First, report must be in PDF format. No Word documents, please. Okay? Don't forget to add your name and the student ID. It's very common, I don't know why, but it's very common for students to not add their names in the report. Okay? Um, one thing to report also is the report is not just a collection of data and figures. Uh, last year, I had some students that the report would they put, put a figure uh, with some data points and then they would put like a calculation of the p-value and that's not it. The report is a discussion of your uh, experiment, is an explanation of your experiment. Okay, so to give you an outline of the report, it doesn't need to follow this exactly, but if you don't know what to do, uh, follow these ideas. First, describe the objective of your experiment. Okay, I want to do an experiment to understand something, or I want to do an experiment to show something. Okay, then you describe how you gather the data. Uh, what kind of data are you gathering? Did you ha have to run a program? Did you have to go pick up rocks in, this, in the beach? Did you have to look for data in papers? Did you have to get data from the newspaper or from the internet? So describe what kind of data you gathered. Also, make sure to describe, if necessary, what did you do to make sure that the collection of data was fair? For example, are you running two methods in the same computer or you're making sure that you are collecting rocks always at the same time. Give all these descriptions of how you collected your data. Okay, Then you do the data analysis. The data analysis is now where you're going to calculate uh, the estimator of whatever you are trying to do for your experiment, uh, the area estimator, the confidence interval. Uh, you're going to maybe draw an image to show the difference of the data, etc. Finally, based on these estimators, you're going to discuss the conclusion of and the results. So talk about the limitations. Well, we did this experiment, but we could not collect data about X. So our experiment does not consider X. Or we did this experiment and it was very interesting. We, we expected A, but we found B. Or we found exactly what we expected. Note that for report, report one, you don't need to do statistical inference. Okay, 
If you want to do statistical inference, that's okay. But if you do statistical inference, I will expect you to do it right. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always send me a message. Tomorrow we will gonna have an office hour that you can ask questions about the, uh, the report. Very important though, it's important to make sure that your experiment is reproducible. What is an, a reproducible experiment? First, you need to include enough information to replicate your data collection. So in your report, it should, there should be enough information so that if I want to do the exact same experiment that you did, I should be able to. I read your report, oh, you, the, she did the experiment like this, I'm going to follow the steps of the report and I'm going to get, hopefully, the same result. Okay. Second, include the data used in your analysis. Uh, in this class and last class and the second class, you, show, you saw that I always included a CSV file that is used to, to calculate the different tests that we used and the different functions and the different images. So at the same way for you, after you do the experiment, you're going to have some data, put that data in a CSV file and include it together with your report. Important, do not put that data directly in your report. Uh, I had some students that included in the report, like it was one page of discussion, one page of conclusions, and 20 pages in the middle of the report with the data. Don't do that. Your data goes in a separate file, a CSV file, because then I can load in a script, I can put in a table, etc. Okay? Uh, include if you uh, used code to calculate the mean, to calculate the variance, if you use code to calculate the... Uh, the confidence interval include the script that you use to calculate all of that okay and um, if you needed some code to generate some data you can also include include that again do not include the code inside of the report your report is for you to describe your experiment i expect a good report one to be like two three four pages at most it doesn't need to be very long of course, if you include your code, it will be 15 pages long. That's wrong, okay? Code goes in a separate file, please. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's go to the comments about the attendance survey. Uh, we had some very interesting comments and I want to talk about them. All right, so first, uh, I asked all of you to tell me your favorite sci-fi story. Thank you, everyone, to put it. So the most common was the three-body problem. Six people said that the three-body pro problem was the favorite sci-fi story. I have also read the three-body problem. I really liked it. To be very honest, I loved book one. I liked book two. I didn't like book three very much. But anyway... Um, Second was Inception uh, from Nolan and Interstellar, also from Nolan. Both of them, f uh, five uh, votes each. They are very nice stories. Um, I like Inception, Interstellar, I don't like so much, but Inception is really good. I, I agree. Uh, then we had Hitchhiker's Guide to Gal the Galaxy. Hitchhiker's Guide to Galaxy is a little bit different from the others. It's a comedy sci-fi, which has some very interesting ideas in it. If you have not seen it, I also recommend it. And a uh, very traditional Back to the Future with two votes. Also, we had lots of other people. Aging, Stories of Your Life, Pacific Rim, Jurassic Park. We had a game here, Cyberpunk 277. That's very nice. Red Shirt. Uh, I have not read Red Shirt, but the author, uh, Tom, uh, Scalzi, John Scalzi, I like other books of John Scalzi. And there's Game, I also read this book, very nice. I Am Legend, Fahrenheit 451, uh, The Short Stories of Shinichi Hoshi, Brave New World, Caves of Steel, Tenet, I don't really know Tenet, that's interesting. Darker Than Black, I think it's an anime, if I'm not right. Dr. Stone is definitely an anime. Iron Man. Nausicaa, Your Name. It's very interesting because Your Name definitely counts as sci-fi, but a lot of people might not consider it a sci-fi. I think most of Mamoru Hosoda's work can be considered in a similar way. Lords of the Rings as well. Uh, you might be making some enemies by saying that Lord of the Rings is sci-fi, but yeah, I agree with you. It's a different society. What if the world worked under magic? I, I think that sci-fi is like stories that make you think of what if the world was different than it is right now? How would society change? Uh, and then we had 
One person said iRobot from Will Smith is their favorite uh, sci-fi. And I would like to say that whatever you think it's sci-fi, sure, uh, it's sci-fi. I mean, the very first story that was considered sci-fi was Frankenstein from um, about two, three hundred years ago. Um, iRobot, there's a very nice book called iRobot. And if you liked why, why Robot from Will Smith, go read the book. It's completely different. And there was one student that was too cool for sci-fi. Okay, um, then let's go to the serious questions now. Um, one student asked, uh, oh yeah, no, first uh, questions. So I asked two questions in the, in, this, in, the, in the survey to see how your knowledge of the uh, subject was. The first one is we had an experiment and what information you should write in the results sections. So. Uh, here is the question, and I think a lot of you uh, maybe did not really understand the question because some of you said, oh, um, this, uh, we cannot reject the new hypothesis or we can reject the new hypothesis. But here, uh, this question already says, yes, you did your experiment and your experiment rejected new hypothesis. The question is, after your experiment rejected new hypothesis, what should you write on your report? Okay, that was the question. Uh, so maybe if you read the question and you, you're not sure, oh, I, I, I'm not really sure what this question asks, send me a message, okay? Um, we're here to help you, okay? And try to read carefully the question. Um, anyway, so what was the correct answer? The correct answer is basically this, two kinds of information. Uh, when you write the report about an experiment, you have the main information, the data that you got. So that would be the main result. In this case, it was the average energy expenditure of the new method and the old one. Also the estimators that you use. So the difference from the old method, the confidence interval, etc. So if someone said the means of the two methods or the confidence interval, something like that, I would say that it was correct about the main information. Of course, in addition to the main information, you also need to report the information about the statistical test. And the information about the statistical test first is what test did you use? So did you use the Z test? Did you use the T test? Was the test paired? Did the test assume um, that you know the variance or not, etc. So what test did you do? Until now, we just studied one test with a few variations. Uh, next class, we're gonna study a different test. So you have to say what test you used. After you say the test you used, you have to say what was the hypothesis, the result, the confidence, and the p-value, at least. So for instance, we can say something like, we rejected the new hypothesis of both values being the same with 95% confidence and the p-value was 0 0.02. But you don't need to write this, you just need to say, you need to, so what you need to say is that what test was conducted and the parameters of the test. So again, the right, the right answer is when you report on your test, you need to give the main information. So what was actually that you measured? What was the difference that you saw? And then the statistical information, what statistical test you conducted, what were the parameters and the result of your statistical test, okay? Now, we got uh, seven students that actually did the full correct answer with this these two parts of information in different ways. And we had a lot of students that um, either forgot to talk about the main information or forgot to talk about the statistical information. So a lot of students said, uh, forgot to say, just say, oh, just say the p-value or just say it was rejected. And that's not enough. You need to tell like the p-value by itself does not give you any information about what was the result of your test. If you say the p-value without saying what is the hypothesis that you are actually rejecting and what are the values that you are considering, that's, that doesn't really give you any information. So the p-value alone is not enough. On the other hand, of course, you need to tell what was the p-value, what was the test, what was the confidence interval. So you need both, okay? 
The second question I asked is when you should use a normal distribution and when you should use a student D distribution. And this was a very straightforward question, straight from, I think that was one slide that had this. And basically, the normal distribution you used when you know the true variance. And the student T distribution you use when you don't know the true variance, so you need to estimate it from the sample data. That's it. Uh, a lot of people surprisingly got this. I think uh, there were say, 3, uh, 6, 9, 12. So about 12 people got this answer wrong. A lot of people said something that, oh, the student T distribution is when you have a small sample. Uh, and the normal is when you have a large sample. And some students said, oh, the student T distribution is when you have a large sample and the normal is when you have a small sample. I think you might be confused. Uh, I mentioned the small and large sample to assume if you can uh, assume that your uh, experiment follow a normal distribution or not. But it has nothing to do with the T distribution. Remember, the T distribution is a specific case where the shape of the distribution changes with the degrees of freedom okay it has nothing to do with sample size so take a second look if you got this question wrong take a second look at the materials of last lecture and try to see the difference okay and then we have some comments from the students two students asked can i ask can i change the topic of report one and of course if you if you thought about report one and uh, you wrote something in the, in the in the Manaba and you want to change the topic, not a problem. Remember that if we go to Manaba, uh, we go to assignments, this report 1A is just for me to check your topic, just for me to check if everything is right. Report 1A is not graded. Report 1 is the important one, okay? So you can change your topic, no problem. Do I need to resubmit the first report? No, not necessary. The first report is not graded. It's just for me to check if uh, you're doing your report okay. If you have any questions, come tomorrow for the, uh, come today, I think, for the um, office hours. Is there any format for writing the experiment report? Yes, uh, just check the slides for this video. Uh, the first slide of the lecture showed that the course is 01CH740, but the footer of the slides also show the course is 0AL040. Which one is correct? 0AL0400 is correct. Two years ago, it was 01CH, but last year it changed to 0AL0400. I'm sorry, sometimes I'm, I change the slides a little bit every year, but sometimes I forget to change the code. The correct code is 0AL0. Do not register to 01CH unless you, for some reason, joined SCUBA three years ago and you took a break. But if you're not in this special situation, if you joined the university last year or if you joined the university this year, you have to register for 0AL0. If you register for 01CH, go to the office and ask to change to zero AL zero, or it will not count for your graduation, okay? Now, one student asked this question, and to be quite honest, I did not exactly understand what you're trying to ask. So I will try to answer what I think is right, but if you still have questions, come and send me a message or come to the office hour. So in how to choose alternate hypothesis and new hypothesis, something new is happening as a basis, if we change the purpose of the example to check if everything is working correctly, uh, does it mean that 8, 1 and 1 will also change? When you choose the alternate hypothesis and the new hypothesis, um, rejecting the new hypothesis is a strong indication towards the alternate hypothesis. But not rejecting the new hypothesis is not a strong indicator for the new hypothesis. So you cannot just switch them because when you don't reject the new hypothesis, it doesn't mean that the new hypothesis is right. It just means that there is not enough evidence for the alternate hypothesis. So because rejecting the alternate hypothesis, the, rejecting the new hypothesis is a strong result and not rejecting the new hypothesis is a weak result, usually we want 
should say that the new hypothesis is the hypothesis that make the smallest number of assumptions. It's the simplest hypothesis, okay? So it will depend on your experiment, of course, which one is the new hypothesis and which one is the alternate hypothesis. But to choose the new hypothesis, you have to specify what is the hypothesis that makes the smallest number of assumptions, okay? It's not simple. You need to do it many times to get a good hang of it, but that's generally the idea. The new hypothesis, this hypothesis that is, they makes the smallest number of assumptions. Uh, there is one more that I think was very interesting. You should do a lecture section because when we just watch the videos, you feel like we can't be watching a question immediately because we think that maybe we should watch it over and over to get the point. And there really is an offline or live interaction so we could ask something that pop our mind. I agree. I think that you are completely right about this. Um, I prefer to do the lecture live with people because I can ask questions. But to be honest with you, this is not possible. First, because we have students in different time zones. So we have some students that are right now in North Africa. We have some students that are right now in Indonesia. We have some students that are right now in China. So if we do an online lecture, it will be difficult for students in different time zones to participate. So the lectures must be through videos. Another reason is that, to be very honest with you, I think that even when it's live, it's very difficult for the students to ask questions uh, because it's like this. When I'm talking, I'm not looking at you. If I look at you and I see that you have a question, oh, I don't understand anything, I can stop and talk to you. But when it's online, everyone has their video turned off. And it's okay if you have your video turned off. But if you have your video turned off, I don't know if you have like a, the, the face of someone who is asking a question. You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of hard. So what I try to do is the office hours. I know that in the office hours, like you said, oh, maybe uh, my question is that I did not watch the video, so I should watch the video again. My recommendation is don't watch the video again unless you really did not understand like anything at all. You don't even know what question to ask. But if you know what question to ask, write the question down and bring it to the bring it to the office hours. Like write a list of questions and bring it to the office hours. Uh, and it, it doesn't need to be the questions of the last lecture. It can be the question of the first lecture or the question of the first, second lecture. It can even be a question that is not really related to any, any, any lectures. I, I would be happy to talk about anything. Um, so, so, yeah. Uh, what I would try to do is last, last office hours, we talked about the experiments because everyone wanted to know what they should write for the report. This time, I will try to get this data that we used in this class and I'll try to do some coding on R to show how we do this. I'm not sure, depends on how many people are there, but come and let's talk and, um, and, and see if you can answer the questions online, okay? Oh well, it was already 20 minutes for this, move, this video as well, it was very long. So thank you very much for all the comments, all the questions, I really enjoy your questions and I see you in the office hour and then after the golden week to continue this course. Bye-bye.